stimulated to different stimuli, you want to make sure that you try to decrease and minimize those types of that type of stimulation in the classroom or in the environment. Um, so you want to find out what those different things are. Um, if it's visual, it might be decorations in the class or other, just a lot of activity going on, things like that. So if that is the case, you want to try to minimize those kinds of things. Have fewer decorations in the classroom. Um, maybe not have a lot of people doing different kinds of things in the classroom. Maybe provide a study carol for the child that they can just kind of have their focus on one, one different area of the classroom. Um, other things, just with the noise, if it's in the lunchroom, um, maybe you could allow the child to eat in a smaller area with just a couple of peers instead of in the lunchroom where all that noise is. Um, you could allow the child to wear noise-canceling headphones um, or other types of um, earplugs and things like that. We would just kind of mute the, the noise that's in the area. If there's a fire drill that's scheduled, you could again allow the child to wear headphones, give the child warning about that so that they know that that's coming up or even allow the child to go for a walk with somebody outside of the building during that during that fire drill because those usually are scheduled. Um, if the child is sensitive to touch, you can provide different um, textures that the child is accustomed to and just allow opportunities for the child to gradually increase the different types of um, tactile input that they're getting. Um, so an example of that might be if the child is in the classroom and they're maybe making a cotton ball Easter bunny for Easter or something like that. Maybe the child could use different materials as well. Maybe they could use the little um, squares of tissue paper and put it on the end of a pencil and then put glue on it and then put more of a like a, a different kind of a texture for that same bunny rabbit activity that they have in the classroom. So you want to make sure that the child has different textures of materials that they can, that they can tolerate. Um, if the child is sensitive to smells, Again, you probably wanna do this for everybody anyway, is you want to avoid any kind of strong perfumes or colognes in the classroom. And for cleaning supplies, you wanna make sure that you're talking to the custodians and making sure that they are not um, using really strong smelling kinds of chemicals for cleaning and things like that. You wanna have it as uh, neutral smelling as possible. So again, those environmental modifications will be very important. Um, and I think I've told you about some of the uh, the little girl that I saw that had um, the real strong sensitivity to the the circular swing or the circular slide and if she went down at one time she'd be okay but if she went down it a couple times she would just totally lose it um, so you'd want to avoid or have her not do a lot of those kinds of vestibular kinds of activities you'd want to allow her to do more of the heavy pressure touch and more of the climbing and the pushing and those kinds of things and provide that that heavy pressure touch for her um, other things, another thing with her was that the, when, in the, when she was in the Head Start, just the smells of, they did the cooking there, and if there was certain smells coming from the kitchen, she would just, again, kind of lose it in the classroom because, and you just had to be sensitive.